I have my config manager 2503 environment all installed now and it's ready to go. Now it's time to set up some of the basics of config manager. We need a boundary group, which is a method of defining which client can access or use this particular config manager site. Let's jump into the console and take a look at this in more detail. And so just heading over to the config manager console, we're going to head down to hierarchy configuration and we have boundaries and boundary groups. Now we need, we need to configure at least one boundary in order to put it in a boundary group, so we'll do that first. Now a boundary, as I mentioned, is a way of confining or defining which clients will be able to access the site server and you do that by defining either a range of IPs or or whatever. So let's take a look at that. We'll choose create boundary and you can see I can choose between uh, IP subnet, uh, AD site, IPv6 prefix, IP address range or even which VPN they're connected to. In this case I'm going to go with IP subnet and I'm going to call this my main lab subnet. So in this case it's a small environment. It's going to have a small um, basic network environment so all I need to do is make sure that I at least include the devices that will be coming online within this subnet boundary. And so we just need to figure out what network we're using. So we'll just go down to start and do terminal, do IP config, and we are on 192.168.100 on a slash 24. Fantastic. So 192.168.100.1. On a slash 24. Now you'll see subnet ID is currently empty, and it, when I type in that last number there, it fills it in for me because that's the subnet ID. Now I will admit I'm not 100% understanding how subnet IDs work because, as you know, 192.168.100.0 could, depending on the subnet mask, could be anything. I mean, what if I change that? Hmm. Never really understood how this works. Yeah, I, I really don't understand how it works, but it calculates it for you, and you don't need to worry about it. So it's gonna, it's gonna create this subnet ID, um, and it seems to work. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it, and we'll choose boundary groups. Now I don't have a boundary group here at all, and if I choose add, I won't be able to create one. I don't think. No. So I need to create a boundary group separately. So for now, we're just creating this boundary and we'll move on to the next step. I'll choose OK, head back to the console, and here we've got that boundary. Now if I right click, add selected items, we can do add selected to an existing boundary group or create a new one, but I'll show you what the boundary group looks look like first before we move on. So boundary groups, we have the default site boundary group right here. You could use this one, but just to show you how you create a boundary group, I'm going to I'm going to create one now. I'm going to right click, create boundary group. I'm going to call this my main lab boundary group, and I'm going to put in the boundary that I've got. Now you can imagine that if you've got more than one boundary, they will show up in this list as selectable items. There we go. And it really doesn't matter how you've created the boundary. If the boundaries are there, you'll be able to select them. We'll choose OK. And now if I just choose apply and OK, then we've created a boundary group. But you'll notice that this boundary group has one member and zero site system count. So we don't have any site systems served by this boundary group or site systems ser serving this boundary group. So if I right click on here and choose property, we can go in and edit that. And you can see references we have site, uh, select site system servers, and this allows us to choose which servers will respond to clients and which servers will use will be used for policy uh, and content. So I'll choose OK, and here is the only site server that I've got. Now bear in mind, if you don't select it, then it's literally not going to work. You need this site specified in the site boundary group. So there it is. OK, now if I choose apply, then that is done, and that's all I really need. But then you've got this site assignment option at the top here. And this is used only when the devices are being discovered. Now if a, um, if a device is, is being provisioned by config manager, uh, operating system deployment, or if you're pushing the client, you can normally set the site that you want to assign to during provisioning, or you can do it during client push. But it's possible to have 
a boundary group do the site assignment for you. And so if I choose use this boundary group for site assignment, you can see that I can choose the site and that will mean that any client that is discovered within this boundary will be assigned to this site. Now in a single site environment, that's perfectly fine. That's gonna work absolutely fine. If you have multiple sites, then you might wanna consider how you're doing site assignment, but for single sites, just crack on with this. I want you to apply. Now when I look at relationships, you can see that we, have, we are able to do fallback uh, relationships with different boundary groups Slightly more complicated topic to talk about. I'm not going to cover that in this particular video because this is just setting up the very basics of Config Manager. When we head over to the Options tab, you can see that we're able to specify that uh, peer downloads can take place within this boundary group and specify some things around that. And then finally, in the Security tab, we're able to specify which users are assigned to this particular boundary group. So which admin users are actually able to make changes to this boundary group as well. All we need to do is choose OK. And now we've got not only our boundary set up, but we also have our boundary groups. OK, so we have our boundary groups all in place now. Soon we'll make sure our distribution point is all good to go too. See you next time.